Welcome to this YSL VBA tutorial. In this video, we'll explain how you can use different web browsers with Selenium. We'll start with a quick reminder of how to open up Google Chrome and navigate to a website, and then show you how to do the same thing using both the Opera browser and the Microsoft Edge browser. We'll briefly explain why the Firefox browser sadly no longer works with Selenium Basic, and then towards the end of the video, explain how you can use the web driver interface so that you can select the browser you want to use at runtime. So let's get started. Here's the basic example we'll create in this video. The idea is that I can select the name of a web browser from this drop down list, and then when I click the WikiMe button, it's going to generate a random article from Wikipedia. I genuinely have no idea what article I'm going to get, by the way, but I do know which, which browser we're going to be using because I selected that from the drop down list. Um, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that. Um, Oh, German scouting organizations. Great. So if I wanted to join uh, the scouts in Germany, now I guess I know how to do that. Perfect. Right. Let's try using a different browser. I'll go for Edge this time. And then if I click WikiMe again, it's going to change the browser, of course. So I'm using Microsoft Edge now. And then I'll get something about Ballantine Pier. I have no idea where that is. Vancouver. Excellent. And I can read all about that and find out everything there is to know about it. Um, of course, the point of the, um, the video isn't so much what page you generate, it's about making sure you get the browser you want. If you wanted to follow along with the video, I'm going to make the assumption that you've already installed Selenium Basic and the driver for Google Chrome already. If you haven't done that, we do have a video which explains how to do that. It's a fairly short one. It's a fairly quick and easy setup to get Selenium Basic working on your machine. And you can use this video to help you get that done. Let's start by writing some basic code to open up a web page using Google Chrome, as we should already have that web driver installed. I've got a brand new blank Excel workbook over here. I'll head up to the developer tab and open up the visual basic editor. I need to set a reference to the Selenium type library, so I can head to the tools menu and choose references. And then in the list, I can find Selenium type library and check the box next to that. Once you've done that, you can click OK. And then I'll insert a new module in the usual way. And I'll declare a variable at the module level to hold a reference to the browser we're going to create. I could declare the variable inside the subroutine, but annoyingly that means that when the variable goes out of scope at the end of the subroutine, it immediately closes down the browser. So if I declare a private variable, I'll call it br as selenium.chrome driver, as we know we're going to open up Google Chrome first. Then I can create a subroutine. Uh, let's call it something like use different browsers. And then in here, we can set a reference to a to a new instance of a Chrome driver. So we can say set br equals new selenium dot Chrome driver. Now we can start the browser by saying br dot start. And then we can get a web page by using the get method. So we can say br dot get and then pass in the URL that we want to navigate to. I'll just type in a couple of double quotes there before we fill in the actual URL. Now, Wikipedia has a, a facility which allows you to generate a random page. If I head back to my open instance of Chrome and head over to this page here, it describes how the random page feature works. The reason I've gone here is so that I can just quickly copy and paste the, um, the URL from this link here. For, so where it says special colon random, I can right click and choose copy link address. And then I can head back to my VB code and paste that address in inside the double quotes. So having done that, it's probably worthwhile giving it a quick, simple check. So we can run that subroutine and we'll open up a new instance of Chrome and it should generate a random article from Wikipedia. There we go. Now, in order for that to work, of course, we need to have the Chrome browser installed on the computer, but we also need to make sure that the Chrome driver is installed in the correct location. So as we described in the earlier video, which shows you how to get set up to use Google Chrome in Selenium Basic, I've got my Chrome driver file installed in the Selenium Basic installation folder. If we want to be able to use a different browser, then we need to make sure we have the correct driver files installed in this same location. And good way to find out which driver files you'll need, by the way, is to head over to the official documentation for Selenium. So I'll post a link to this page in the description below the video, um, and you'll find it in the original video anyway as well. So let's say we wanted to use Opera, the new version of Opera, the, uh, the Chromium-based Opera uh, browser. 
If I wanted to get access to the web driver for that, I can simply follow this link from this page. And that takes me to a page on GitHub. I've got a list of releases here on the right hand side, so I can click on the latest release and then I can find the link to install the Opera driver or download the Opera driver for the correct version of Windows that I'm using. So I'll go with the Win64 version here. I'll just click that link to download the file. It shouldn't take too long. It's not particularly large. When it has downloaded, I can choose to open that in its download location. So I can click on the arrow there and choose to show this file in the folder. I can then right click on it and choose to extract it and then click extract. And then I can double click on the extracted folder and into that folder I can find the Opera driver executable file, copy that from that location, head back to my Selenium Basic folder and then paste that straight in to the Selenium Basic installation. Okay, now that I've done that, I can head back to my VB code and then I can change the two references to a Chrome driver to the Opera driver instead. So in the variable declaration at the top of the module and also in the line of code where we set the browser reference to be a new instance. So I can set that to be a, an Opera driver as well. Having done that, of course, you'll need to make sure that you have Opera installed on the computer. I'm not going to take you through that part. I'm sure you can work out how to do that part yourself. Um, but as soon as I've changed all that, I can run that subroutine again. And this time it will open up Opera instead and give me a completely different random article. Now let's do the same thing for Microsoft Edge. To do that, I can head back to the browser's page in the Selenium documentation, find the link for Edge and then open up that page. You'll find a couple of options for Edge. There's the new Chromium based version and the old legacy version. I've got the new version installed. You can see I've just actually opened up a copy of Edge um, on my machine. So this is the, the new version. So I'm going to scroll down that column and then find the list of downloads for the new versions. Now it's a little bit more complicated here. As you can tell, there are lots of different releases for Edge. And the reason I opened up a copy of Edge was so that I could find out which particular version I'm currently using. So I can open up Edge head to the options menu at the top right hand corner and then choose the help and feedback menu and then choose about Microsoft Edge. And on the page that loads, it tells me which version I'm currently using. It tells me it's up to date. I'm not sure that's quite true. There's a couple of versions been released since this, but I'm using 87066475. So I can then match that up with the version or well, the versions listed in the releases for Microsoft Edge. So that's the one that I'm currently using. And again, I'm going to download the 64-bit version of that driver. So I can click that link to download the file. And again, it won't take too long, not particularly large file. When it has downloaded, I can view it in its folder. And once again, it looks as though I need to un un unzip it or extract it so I can right click on it, choose extract all, and then extract. And then I can double click into that folder and then find the MS Edge driver. I'll copy that to the same Selenium basic folder. And there's the Edge driver installed. Okay, so now let's give this Edge driver a quick test. Let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor. And um, we can do the same thing we did earlier. We can switch the current type of driver to an Edge driver. And then the same thing here as well. And then when we, when we run the subroutine, sadly things don't work quite so smoothly this time. We get a runtime error message complaining that it can't find the driver that we think we've just installed. Um, slightly irritatingly, this is due to the fact that Microsoft seemed to have changed the name of the Edge driver since Selenium Basic was released. And um, Selenium Basic hasn't been maintained since 2016, I think. And um, that was the last release that was, uh, that was created. So at that point, Microsoft's Edge driver was called Edge driver, but it's now called MS Edge driver. As you can see, if I just end this subroutine here and head back to where we've just pasted in our MS Edge driver, um, it's got the wrong name. Fortunately, this is a fairly simple fix. What we can do here is just rename that file to take away the MS at the beginning. Now it's called Edge driver. And then if we switch back to the Visual Basic Editor and then run that subroutine again, everything's happy, we get the new version of Edge opened up and hopefully a new random page. There we go. 
At this point, I should make a quick mention of Firefox. Um, if you scroll back to the page for the, uh, the browser's documentation on the Selenium website, there is indeed a link for the web driver for Firefox. However, it doesn't work for Selenium Basic in VBA. As I mentioned, Selenium Basic was last updated in 2016 and Firefox has come on quite a long way since then and they've moved from the old driver they were using to a completely new version of that, which simply doesn't work with Selenium Basic. Um, you are more than welcome to give it a try. Please don't take my word for granted. Um, don't trust me about anything I say. Um, if you wanted to download that driver, you're more than welcome to. Uh, so I can head over to the, uh, the, the Gecko driver page on GitHub and then find the latest release and then scroll down the page to find the Gecko driver for um, Windows 64-bit. And again, if I can download that, that shouldn't take too long. And then I can show that file in its folder and I can extract it and then I can find the Gecko driver and copy that to the Selenium Basic installation folder. Okay, now if I go back to my VB editor and change my Edge driver to a Firefox driver, we can still write the code, of course. The, uh, the Firefox driver class is still in the Selenium type library, but sadly this does not work. You can see that it's searching for a completely different driver type altogether. And it isn't sufficient just to change the name of the Gecko driver. It works in a fundamentally different way. Um, if you were desperate to use Firefox, then I believe you can grab a very old version of that, I think version 46, but I think that's probably going back a little bit too far to be, to be able to do anything useful. So we're not going to be using Firefox as, uh, as it's not properly supported. So I'm going to just delete the Gecko driver that I've downloaded there, and then I'm just going to tidy up a few more of these windows. I can close some of these down. Uh, so let's get rid of these as we shan't need them for the next part of the video. So at the moment, we're relying on changing the class we're declaring our variable as to change between the different browsers, but that's not going to be particularly useful if we wanted to create the system I showed you at the start of the video with a basic drop down list to switch between them. There's a different way we can launch different browsers using Selenium. What I'm going to do here is change the class I'm declaring my variable as to something called a generic web driver. Um, WebDriver is actually uh, an, an interface, as I understand it. An interface is almost, you can almost think of an interface as like a blueprint for a class. So all of the specific browser drivers rely on the web driver. So they all implement the interface in the same way. They all use the exact same properties and methods. So you can guarantee that when you declare a variable as a Chrome driver or as an Edge driver, they inherit all the same methods and properties as the generic web driver. So I'm going to change my declarations and instantiations to web drivers, but that means that the code won't any longer work. At this point, if I try to run it, it's going to say I haven't defined the browser <laughs> because indeed I haven't. I've created a most, the most generic possible web driver that isn't specific to any one browser. We can refer to or we can instantiate a specific browser in a couple of different ways, but the way we're going to do it is by specifying the value of an optional parameter in the start method of the driver object. So if I type in a space after the word start, I expose this optional parameter called browser. So for example, nice and simply, if I wanted it to be Chrome, I can type in Chrome. If I wanted it to be Edge, I could type in Edge, Opera, Opera, etc. Having done that, if I run the subroutine again now, we'll find that it opens up Google Chrome and will load eventually a completely random um, Wikipedia article. So we can just carry on changing that bit of text to whichever browser we like, uh, and then we'll get the code using that browser. So now that we've done that, we can, rather than typing in our web browser name manually, get it to reference the value of a cell in an Excel worksheet. So this part's pretty easy, really. It's just using some basic Excel techniques. If I head back to my Excel workbook, I can pick any old cell that I like. I'll type in choose browser in cell B2, and then just do some very basic formatting for that. Nothing particularly complicated or particularly attractive either. Um, feel free to uh, improve on that formatting 
um, it's not difficult. And then I'm going to use cell C2 to create a drop down list of browser names. There are so many different ways we can do this. I'm going to take quite a simple approach by using the data validation feature in Excel. So from the data tab in the ribbon, I can head over to the validation tool. So there's data validation sitting just there. And then from the drop-down list, I can select the, uh, the data validation option or just click on the, the button part of that tool. And then I get to choose how to set up the allowed values for this cell. So from the any value or the allow option, I'm going to choose list. And then in the source, I can simply type in the list of browser names I would like to be able to use. You can type this in in a comma separated list. Do make sure you spell them properly, of course. We could also reference a list of cells in the worksheet if we have our browser names stored elsewhere. But that's a nice simple example for this code. So Edge Chrome Opera, click OK. And now I can click on a drop down list to select the browser I want to use. Now we simply need to point our code to the value of the cell in which we've selected the browser name. So we can head back to the Visual Basic Editor. And instead of specifying the browser name as a string literal, we can point to a cell on sheet one. So I'm going to reference that worksheet by code name. So I'll say sheet one dot range c2 dot value. We could add a check to make sure that the cell has a value. We could add a basic if statement there to check that it's not an empty string. Uh, but I think this is sufficient for our basic example. So having done that, if I switch back to the workbook, I'll head to the developer tab in the ribbon. And then from the insert tool, I'll insert a basic form control button to launch our uh, code. So I'm just going to draw a button in this cell. If you wanted to make sure your button snaps to the edges of cells, you can hold down the Alt key as you draw the button and you'll find it snaps to the edges. So that's quite satisfying when you can do that. And then I can select the only subroutine I've created, use different browsers and click OK. While I'm here, I'll take the opportunity to change the text. I'll just use the same text I used earlier, Wikime. And then I can click away from that button to have the system created. So at this point, you can choose any browser you like from the drop down list and click your Wikimi button to get a new random article from Wikipedia. Um, so that should all work fairly straightforwardly. As I said at the start of the video, it's not meant to be a particularly complicated example, just the basics of how you can switch between different browsers um, when you're using Selenium. So I hope you found that one useful. Um, thanks for watching it. See you next time.